Mike Stanton. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. It's April 1st, uh, but Muni market performance in the first quarter was no joke. We read on Bloomberg this morning, Amanda Albright reporting that it was the worst quarter for Muni market performance in at least 40 years, a negative 6.4% total return. Uh, Brian, we've talked about this landscape for weeks. Uh, anything changing uh, as you see it in the market? What kind of trends are you watching? Uh, you know, it- It'll be interesting to see if maybe we've hit a little bit of a bottom here. Um, you know, the market certainly did feel a little bit more constructive than it has uh, for you know most of the first quarter of this year. Um, we finally started to see rates stabilize a little bit. You know, on the Treasury side, uh, a lot of the focus was on uh, you know the geopolitical headlines coming out of Russia and Ukraine. Uh, so you know, going back to last uh, last Friday through most of this week, we rallied. Uh, on the 10 year from about a 247 last week to uh, down into the low 230s. Uh, That's reversed course a little bit this morning as we got a little bit of a disappointing headline number on the non-farm payroll, but um, so that's back up a little bit. Uh, We did see, uh, you know, kind of uh, the first inversion uh, twos, tens earlier this week, um, which kept the curve really flat. Uh, And again, this morning we're inverting a little bit. I think the two year was at about a two. 44 and the 10 year at a 242 uh, as we were starting to uh, starting to record this. So, you know, a little bit, um, you know, a little bit of a different dynamic this morning, but overall in the backdrop of those treasury moves, uh, munis, you know, while we uh, flattened a little bit earlier in the week, uh, later in the week, Wednesday, Thursday, the market was, you know, kind of flat to even um, bumping yields a little bit with the MMD curve uh, shifting uh, a couple of basis points lower yesterday. So, you know, we did see uh, a heavier supply week than we have uh, in quite a while. Um, you know, it's still taking some elevated spreads, uh, but we had a pretty diverse uh, supply uh, landscape this week. Uh, you know, anything from uh, 950 million New York City TFAs, you know, that took kind of plus 70, 75 uh, on the longer end to uh, 950 million of a U.S. Virgin Island deal, which, uh, you know, the spreads that were in uh, kind of the plus 230, 235 uh, camp. So, you know, you saw some pretty wide variability, but uh, but deals were getting done. So seeing nine and a half billion um, plus another billion and a half or so of corporate QCIPs, um, you know, is, is constructive. So um, I, I think that's kind of on the higher end, uh, just in the muni space, we saw about 25% of the market was taxables. Um, so those are, you know, those are good trends. If we can continue to, um, you know, to find the liquidity here to get deals done, uh, we're going to need it next week. Uh, the calendar is over 11.2 billion, um, and about 20% of that is taxable. So, um, so things are, you know, feeling modestly uh, more constructive uh, as we end this week. And that was one point in that Bloomberg article this morning. Um, you know, the, the uh, mutual fund outflows continue. Really, no change there. Another down uh, one point five billion dollars in the most recent week, according to Lipper. Uh, but one of the things in the article was that crossover buyers, uh, buyers that are looking uh, across all fixed income markets for value, not necessarily for the tax exemption, have started buying munis because they like these these absolute levels. Yeah, and you know, one trend we saw uh, earlier, you know, kind of middle of the week, um, there there was quite a, a bit of pickup in trading, particularly in some of the three percent coupons that have really gotten hit um, in this interest rate move. You know, a lot of those are uh, are below the de minimis cutoff um, at this point, and uh, and there were active crossover buyers uh, in that three percent coupon space. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's a pretty good trend to see if uh, if some of those guys are are thinking that we finally hit attractive enough yields, um, you know, maybe that's enough to kind of start supporting the market here and providing a little bit more liquidity. That de minimis cut off the, the quirky rule in the tax code that uh, when a bond falls to a certain level of discount, the, the, uh, you get a capital gain, which can be taxable for the investor uh, when the bond is redeemed. Um, just a little dis, uh, dislocation in the market that uh, can create opportunity for crossover buyers. Um, so let's talk about, uh, we talked a little bit about the calendar overall. What, uh, what does the BAM calendar look like uh, both this past week and looking forward? Yeah, we had a very active week this week. Uh, BAM uh, was used on uh, over 270 million of par insured. Uh, some of the highlights there were a $55 million deal for Ludington uh, Area School District in Michigan, uh, which also carried the QSBLF uh, state enhancement, uh, which was double A rated. Um, that was a competitive sale that was purchased by Citigroup. Uh, there was a $41 million negotiated sale for Alabama State University, uh, which was priced by Fraser Lanier. That carried BAA3, triple D minus underlying ratings. 
Um, also on the competitive side, Huntington used BAM insurance on a shorter Oshkosh area school district in Wisconsin, uh, which was a, also a double A minus underlying rating. And uh, back on the negotiated front, um, Kalamazoo uh, County Water, which carried double A minus underlying ratings, uh, was priced by Northland Securities using BAM. That was about 27 million. Uh, so, you know, good active week for us. Um, you know, again, uh, next week is, uh, is a little bit heavier. Uh, we've got uh, we've got a fair amount in the pipeline. Uh, one of the highlights there would be sixty six million dollars for Hayward uh, Unified School District in California. That's a negotiated deal being priced by RBC. You know, and oftentimes in this uh, video, when we talk about the largest deals of the week, we're not talking about BAM insured sector, but one of the largest deals, a uh, billion plus uh, from DFW Airport, may have an insurance angle to it. What's uh, what are you hearing there? Yes, uh, over a billion of uh, DFW scheduled to price next week. Uh, that's a large taxable deal. Um, BAM has been awarded uh, if insurance is used and, uh, and indications thus far are that, are that there may be as, uh, as much as uh, an index eligible uh, insured term bond, which would be a $300 million plus uh, term bond with insurance. So um, you know, we'll, we'll follow that closely and we'll see how the market develops, but uh, we're, uh, we're anticipating a, a, a good sale, uh, a good use there. A lot of chatter about that conversation, about that transaction. You can imagine at the Bomb Buyer Texas Public Finance Conference in Austin last week, uh, the DFW officials have been uh, waiting and poised to sell that transaction and move forward with their capital plan as soon as it looked like uh, post-COVID travel uh, trends were stabilizing. So they've seen that now and they're ready to go forward. So uh, interesting to see how the performance uh, stacks up next week. Thanks for your time, Brian. We'll uh, talk to you then. Thanks, Mike.